It is officially now the time to say that is VS Code dead? Is Z going to be the new programmer's favorite code editor? Uh, yes, I know this is a really funny statement that is VS Code dead or is Python dead or is JavaScript dead. But to be honest, I won't lie to you. I'm actually enjoying stepping on the nerves of people who just think that this programming language is my everything. This is my first love. This tool is everything. I just love this tool and they can't hear a single word about it or against it. And I'm enjoying this. That's why I'm making more of these videos. That is Python dead, is JavaScript dead, is VS Code dead. I'm enjoying this. I have said it out loud for thousands of times that tools, programming, these are just tools itself. You don't need to love it from your heart. Just do the work and that's it. But again, I'm enjoying it. So I'm pretty sure you're also enjoying the comment section here as well. Anyway, so this video is more about uh, having a fun with the Z, a new code editor, which I found really interesting. And I really love to explore new things. And probably that's the reason why you are on this channel and you have already hit that subscribe button because you really want to enjoy the things, feel like a programmer, try out new things, experiment with new stuff. That's why we live in this modern world. So many things are here to explore and this channel is your one-stop solution to find all such things and all such news about that. So today we're gonna to be exploring a new code editor which I have tried on my laptop as well. It's fantastic, but there are some things which are missing in it. Uh, I'll walk you through with that as well, that what are the things, but the initial first look is, oh, that is amazing, absolutely amazing. So let's go ahead and try this out. So you can, all you can do is go onto the Google and try out Z uh, code editor. Yes, it's a little bit difficult. And the people behind it are actually very, very interesting. So you really need to watch out for that as well, that who are the people. So this is the one code at the speed of thought. Yeah, that's uh, the biggest thing that will catch a lot of people's attention is it's built in Rust. Yeah, you heard it right. This is a code editor Rust. So integrated terminal, themes, Vim mode. Yeah, there's a lot more to learn about it. Uh, without wasting any time, let's go ahead and download beta. Currently, the beta is available only for the Mac, so you have to just watch this video. Enjoy it if you are on uh, Windows, but I'm pretty sure they'll be rolling it out for Windows as well. We're going to throw it on my desktop and save it. And there we go. So it's going to take just a couple of seconds and it's all done. Almost. There we go. Let's fire this up. Yes, agree. And please install this, the DMG. Come on, do it faster. And here it is. It says that, hey, just drag and drop me an application. I'll surely do that. <laughs> and once it is here, now I think I can fire up Z. So let's try Z. There we go. Uh, roll it up. And yes, I really want to open this up. And this is how it looks like. The very first look of the Z. So you'll notice here that this is the first look. Yes, it looks very similar, very familiar. You can install the CLI, so let's go ahead and do this. Yes, I would love to install it on my recording system. And choose a key map, you can choose a variety of key map. Uh, VS Code is default. I love the VS Code key map. It's in my memory, so I've used it for a really long time. But in case you are Atom, JetBrains or Sublime Text fan, you can just import your key bindings, so that's nice. And then you can choose a theme. Uh, I really didn't enjoy the theme part because there is only very limited kind of a themes. So these are all the dark modes at the top. Uh, Andromeda, if you like this one, or there are some uh, Rose, Pine, Moon, in case you are with that kind of a mood. Uh, really, a uh, very limited amount of themes because it's obviously in the beta feature right now. So this is my first look on this. Uh, Rose, Pine, too sharp for your eyes, maybe. Uh, there's also one I kind of a briefly settled on to this one is, was it One Dark or AU Dark? Uh, somewhat like that, AU Dark. Yeah, this is what I am briefly adjusting right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to uh, get one system up and running. So what we're going to do is let me go ahead and search it on. Let's go on to Google first and try on to Google. And what we're going to do is let's try Next.js and see uh, Next.js docs. Let's go there. And in the Next.js docs, let's try installation. Uh, NPX, yeah, let's go with that. And now let's go back to the Z. And what we're going to do is, uh, by the way, you can hit your Command Shift P to introduce con uh, Command Palette onto this one. I'll walk you through by opening a project. In that way, you will understand more about the pros and cons of this. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it. And also there is a Command and Comma, just like with the VS Code. You can open up the settings here. For example, I you can change the themes here. 
Uh, font, I didn't like this one. This is too small for me. So I'm just going to go for 24-ish, 24. And I'll save this. As soon as you save this, this is much better because I record a lot of videos. I love that. Uh, one thing I really liked about it is if I go ahead, notice this carefully, if I go ahead and switch it to 14, save this, my terminal font also changes with that. So this is something I like that they should be synced. If I'm changing the font, why I need to go into the terminal and change it separately? I want this big font, so let it give me big font. And there are a lot of other settings as well. I'll walk you through with the docs as well. There are some interesting stuff uh, going on with this one. Uh, some annoying things as well, uh, but let's just go with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on to desktop and I have a test folder. Yes, you can access all of this. And here we are going to go ahead and run the command npx create next step. And we're going to call this one as Z test because we won't be creating this application for learning next years, but rather testing out the Z. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do that. All the basic. Yes. Yes. Do yeah, TypeScript linting. Tailwind. Yeah, Tailwind is something which I really want to focus on this one. Uh, source. No, I don't want to use source directory app router and customize import alias. Uh, yeah, give me that. And import alias will like to configure at or star at. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and open this up. And it's not going to take too much of the time. And there we go. Almost there. Almost there. Okay, so in the meantime, we can explore some of the docs of the Z. So there's something interesting in the docs. I really like the doc that how they are saying about the configuration, key binding and themes. So everything is properly mentioned. I played a lot last night with this whole things which are available. So I'm going to go ahead and change my uh, font as well. So buffer font family, let's go ahead and try this. I don't like anyways this font, but this is decent font compared to the previous one. So we're going to go ahead and font family and the one that I'm going to be using is uh, Mono Lisa. Save this. And yep, this is the font that I usually use, Mono Lisa. I bought it. <laughs> yes, I paid money for it. And one thing I noticed here that, for example, here is my Z test folder. I cannot drag and drop this. Like it doesn't work that way. Can I drag and drop it in the projects? Nope. So there's no way I can drag and drop my folders. I love this feature in the VS Code, by the way. So let's open this project and on my desktop, on the test, uh, Z test, open this up. Ooh, that's nice. It opened it up in another new window. So every time you open it up, it opens up in a new window. Anyways, we can close the previous one. Let's go up here. Now let's explore how it looks like. The first look is something that you're going to be absolutely loving. If I open up any file like page.tsx, ah, notice here. So obviously things are going way on the scrolling level. So time to hit your settings and you can actually do. I was playing around a lot of settings last night. So here we can go ahead and say that I want a word wrap. No, soft wrap. Yeah, they call it a soft wrap. And you can just go ahead and have a couple of option. Editor width. Yep, that's the one I used last night. Save this. And now we get the auto wrap for everything. And by the way, this wrapping is nice. And one more thing I would like to share is you can actually go ahead and use this uh, bottom terminal uh, just by clicking up here. The shortcuts are same, but you can hit control and tilde and it will open up into a new tab itself. So uh, maybe you can just use this tab onto a separate pane itself and can work like that. So that's interesting uh, options going on. So this is how the basic it looks like. One thing that I absolutely, absolutely missed in this is IntelliSense. We really need IntelliSense in this uh, era. I cannot write my uh, the Stalement CSS at least without any suggestion. I would love to have these suggestions. Uh, there are some good things as well. Uh, so for example, if I want a text center, I have to go ahead and write this. People who are on Vim, they will absolutely love it. No code suggestion. Uh, they somehow feel the code suggestion slow them down. Uh, again, there's a debate about it. Uh, one interesting thing that you'll find is if I go ahead and say, hey, I want an import image from uh, next slash image image if i can write that that would be great image and also i'm going to go ahead and say hey i want to come on new keyboard i'll adjust import link from and we can go ahead and say next slash link uh, there was no suggestion with this uh, it was just there uh, notice here there is these icons uh, which are saying that hey uh, remove unused declarations so automatically it's scanning my code and organizing it and uh, remove unused imports. I can just go ahead and do like this. No, don't want that. Command Z. 
so that's interesting and also this one also gets the duplicate identifier so it does a pretty good job in scanning my code and standing it uh, that's what I wanted to share in this one one thing that is absolutely a killer feature in the Z is how you can do pair programming and collaborate with other feature that is why this is getting so much of attention uh, there are some icons github copilot uh, yeah I tried github copilot it requires licensing I'll probably buy it for some videos and we'll have some fun with it and all of that uh, one thing in the top right corner you can actually sign in and you have to sign in with the github itself and i already created an account so probably that's why it was super fast for me and i can now click on this and collaborate with any of the contact list who are also signed up for this uh, z and i can just invite anybody and yes i tried it with my other account this is flawless this is one feature which is also available in vs code and couple of other editors but the way how this works is flawless like i've never seen anything such collaborative and pair programming thing in my life ever this is super super interesting so you can search for a new contract or you can search for username uh, so maybe i can try somebody whose name is itesh yeah so christopher nash so probably i can just inv uh, invite him up here and i won't be doing that probably i'll try it with some i'll bring in some youtuber or some friends uh, maybe we can try pair programming with them in the z that would be really nice and cool <laughs> all right so this is one thing that you should really really uh, see this now notice here also the hidden folder like git they are also easily available to you so you can see more of this out of the box uh, this is really nice git ignore color linting and everything is really nice in every single i tried a couple of rust project last night as well they worked really nice now coming back on to this one uh, where we can actually go back no, configuring so we can see there is a lot of things like auto save you can do auto uh, save on focus change so they are very very nicely you can see on the right hand side all the things are mentioned that how you want your cursor blink the settings are pretty easy cursor blink you just come up here into settings.json and just look for it so i want something regarding cursor blink uh, i have these options available false null true so you can just say hey i don't want a cursor to blink save it and uh, that's it cursor blinking stops immediately so there are these nice things going on uh, so look at this and uh, yeah one thing I, I really enjoyed in this is this journal so this is something interesting so uh, you can set up your journal path and like this but i'll show you what the journals are all about so it happens to every single one of us that we are writing some codes and doing the things uh, maybe we want to write some notes some thoughts and we really don't want to have it somewhere in the notion or something maybe you want to just draw it down so you can just press command shift p and can hit for journal new journal entry the moment you hit an enter uh, it opens it up like this uh, so it says hey journal was created in 2023 uh, date is 5th no month is 5th and the date is 18th automatically creates that gives you a timestamp as well and you can just start writing your notes and save it every single time you do this it opens so let's just go ahead and try this out it's a simple markdown format so a note for me in in the future horrible keyboard experience as of now but i'll improve uh, i can just go ahead and save this what happens when i close this and start this so i'm back onto my thought train of solving this problem and stuff i'll go again and i'll say hey i need my journal i want to write a new entry it opens up same but splits it based on the timestamp so you can just actually use this quite a lot that how this so this is something interesting i found out although not something which is extraordinarily unique but i found it interesting all right so i found these settings really really interesting and the way how documentation is set up it's pretty amazing there's the alternate scroll blinking copy on select i won't be using it but you you get the idea that this is all given there's also a vim binding as well so in case you are a big time vim fan uh, they actually use neo vim for the bindings so you can go ahead and try this out font size we will discuss font family font features maybe you want ligatures and all of that uh, you can try this out uh, this is something really nice uh, okay a couple of more things i would like to mention before we move out of this video is uh, let's just go for the z z.dev and if you look for who are the people behind it that's where the things get interesting so if you look at uh, the about about the company is also interesting it has very simple uh, a small passionate team with a vision of building the world's best text editor and it's not the first time that this team is actually building a code editor uh, they happen to be the team behind which is one of the code editor which i absolutely loved before vs code 
So let me just show you about the team as well. Uh, they're pretty interesting, so teams. Uh, so and Nathan Sabo, in case you don't know about him, he is the brain behind the Atom Text Editor, which is now no longer actively maintained, but this was one of the best editor by the GitHub. Uh, the reason why I loved it is it was so lightweight, even such big project, you can dump it down, it doesn't freeze and anything. Uh, but eventually they sh uh, fall short in the plugin game, which VS Code actually picked up really nicely. So I would say, so all people here, you can see open source contribution, uh, yeah, really. Teletype for Atom and all of this. So I studied a lot about their philosophy. What they want to do is we, they want to build really amazing code editor, which has uh, code collab features and multi-code editing because I think that's the future where the people are going on. Uh, everything is happening online, all of that. One thing as of now I miss on to this one is IntelliSense. I really need code suggestions. So I have my Tailwind configures and everything. I really want the Tailwind suggestions. So IntelliSense is one thing that I'm missing. I think they are banking quite a lot on the GitHub Copilot about this, that you have to sign in with the GitHub Copilot and all of that. So I think banking on just that uh, code suggestion is not a great idea. You probably want to inject some kind of IntelliSense where the suggestions can be there and I'll be all happy. Uh, I don't want too many of the plugins on my on my code editor itself. I'm happy with the Postman as a standalone app. I'm happy with much of the other things as well. Uh, but yes, you need to open up your plugin game a little bit so that I can fully switch on to this one. I'll definitely try this out with a couple of my upcoming videos. It's a fun thing to sometimes switch on to other code editors so that you don't just fall in love and only with one. It's it's open world, so you need to explore with other editors as well. Uh, this brings my attention to uh, to another code editor, which also came up, but they are very slow in. So there is a code editor known as Fleet by JetBrains, in case you have heard about them. I'm pretty sure you have. So this is a JetBrains, the next generation editor. They are still in public preview. It's been like almost more than a year. Uh, I don't know when they'll be just opening up. The look is decent. It's fast. It's lightweight. Uh, more centric towards cloud. I have high hopes with the Z. The team has delivered in the past and I'm pretty sure they will deliver in the future as well. Uh, just open up your uh, suggestion game and the plugin game and I think, uh, yeah, you're going to nail it down. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this was your first look about the Z, uh, the new code editor, arguably the VS Code killer. <laughs> I love that. Uh, if you enjoy these kinds of puns with the VS Code killer and all of that, let me know in the comment section. And let me know, are you going to be using Z for a couple of side projects? Maybe you want to give it a try. Uh, let me know. And also say thanks to the team. I'm just waiting when they are going to drop the Windows version of it so that more people can try it out. That's it for this video. And let's catch up in the next one.